Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest has raised 37 people from the dead. His team has raised 500 from the dead. Do you want to find out how? You may come handy someday. Now, David Hogan has spent over 40 years helping unreached people groups in Mexico. And in fact, you were told the exact city you were to go to, region you were to go to. How'd that happen? Uh, Angel of the Lord came. There was a, I had a vision. 360, like an IMAX. And I was shown a mountain range. And then it was up to me to find it. Well, you found it. I found it. You got there. I made it. And you got shocked because there was, they were very different than the people you were used to. I mean, yep. witch doctors and demon worshipers. And uh, mm -hmm. you, had, you, you had no paradigm for that. No, sir. There, there's not. Now, where I come from here in America, Louisiana, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, what, tell me what, is, you know, I, I have an idea. Most people, if they weren't called and they bumped into that, their first exposure, they would quit. What did you do? <sighs> Jesus asked me to go. That's what I did. There's your answer. Um, he asked me if I'd do it. Uh, so the answer is yes. So you stuck it out, but what did you do? How did you pray? Uh, what did you do about I mean, what do you, for, for instance, let me give you an example. He's talking to a witch doctor, and before his very eyes, the, now, now you, you, most of you, you don't have a clue about what I'm ready to tell you. You've never, it's never even crossed your radar. He really, what did he turn into? First time it was a bat, big. But you, you actually saw him and... There was a man. Yeah. Turned the flashlight on to himself and went into a creature. I saw that with my eyes, yes, sir. How did you get it into your head you wanted to raise the dead? All right. That's a fair question. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks. I, I was... Uh, uh, all right. I took the Bible apart, put it in notebooks where I could understand it. Each man had his own notebook. Each section of God's Bible had its own notebook. I made a list of the miracles of the men's prayer life, the fasting, their marriages, their children, everything, how it was, how God responded to them and how they, they approached God. And I chose out of the holiest of all the miracles down through the historical events of the Bible, I chose dead raisin. And my wife, my, my wife asked me to, let's start lower. <laughs> <laughs> Headaches, <laughs> different things. But I, I'm not that kind of human being. I, if, if, if God can do it, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. Well, David. How long did you contend for raising the dead before you saw your first dead person come? All right, there you go. That was a four-year fight with these witch doctors. It got really bumpy for me. I lost more than I gained during this time. And then <clears throat> I went out to a very normal day for me, get up, pray three or four hours, seek God, load up my four-wheel drive, go out to the mountain. And I get out of, a, out of my truck, and this man asked me, David, David, would you please come and pray, would you for, please my come and pray for my son? 
And he's sick. Uh, what's the matter? Well, he's, he's sick. Simple. So I walk with him through the woods. I mean, you got to understand, in my world, the the 25 or 30 pastors were walking through the jungle. The smell, the it's awesome to me. Whereas other people would find it offensive, I find it great. Uh, and I start hearing this lady screaming, and we went right to that hut. I get there, and it's a bamboo walled house, dirt floor, grass roof. Looked me right in the face, pointed his finger in my face. My son is dead, now you do something about that. Well, look, I'm an eighth generation preacher. I'm not, my family's not new to this. But nobody's ever been asked that question. And so I went in the hut, followed him, and when I get in there, it's not like there's not angels, there's not awesome, there's a little dead boy with a mama holding him screaming, there's black magic warlocks, there's spiritist healers, they're my enemy. They don't love Jesus and they hate me. I turn around, look at the mom. She backs away from her son. He's a nine-year-old boy. He's been dead for five hours. I kneel down over this boy. I've never seen it before. I don't know how to go about it. I know that Jesus, Elijah, all these guys raise the dead, but I have no experience at all. I just have biblical research for that. I laid my hands on this boy, tried to find a heartbeat, put my ear down, normal pressure points. He's, he's gone. He's still pigmented his skin. His coloration is gone. Started praying, prayed in tongues first, because that seems like the best answer. <laughs> it didn't work. Prayed in English. Of course, that's going to work. Didn't work. Prayed in Spanish. <laughs> that didn't work either. And then I went into Indian. And then I just started weeping and crying, asking God for mercy, because it was really hot in there, probably 115 degrees inside the hut. Probably an hour of prayer, and just all of a sudden, there was a heartbeat in the little boy in arm. I had a hold of his pressure point, and I felt a thump, and then it stopped. It, it, but what, what was the most important to me which is all important. I had a little T-shirt on. I saw that little T-shirt bounce. And, and, and when I did, it really freaked me out. And I look up, and the dad's sitting there. He had seen also the little T-shirt bounce. And I said, did you see that? He said, yes. I said, it works. Yes. <laughs> it works. It really, it actually works to trust heaven and believe the name of Jesus. In about probably three minutes, maybe five, uh, on and off heartbeat, and finally it got steady and strong, and then his coloration came, then he got flexible again, and then his eyes opened, and he's raised from the dead. David. If you have the faith to raise someone from the dead, you have the faith for any miracle in the Bible, anything. Am I right? I believe that's anything right, Anything in the Bible. I want to learn how he prayed for the dead, but I also want to hear about some of these amazing creative miracles that are happening when he prays. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Hello, YouTube. Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. You, you were telling me that not all, but many people that have been dead and come back, and they report what they observed are saying the same thing. What is that same thing? Jesus is sending messages to us that he's coming back soon. Isn't that amazing? People that have literally died. Tell me about that one older woman that died. Yeah, she, <clears throat> this lady, she's a wonderful person, this lady. 
Uh, she started out being a persecutor, you know, a family of wealth that didn't want the gospel in their area. And about 20 years she persecuted us. And then the Lord Jesus got her, captured her. Then about 20 years, 15, 20 years, she served the Lord with us. Awesome person. But then she contacted two incurable diseases. One of the things that I didn't say about her story to you is she told them not to tell me because she's ready to go because she's an older person. She was afraid you'd raise her from the She dead. knew we would. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, sir. She knew we would. And so the, her son, which is one of our pastors, told her, Mom, we have, we've got to tell Brother David. Uh, how old is she at this point? She's uh, late 80s, okay. low 90s, maybe. All right. So she died and was dead probably between 12 and 14 hours. They prayed for her. And while she was dead, she was walking down this trail that had these little blue lights. And she came to this, uh, over this rise, uh, she was telling me about it. There was a city, Golden City. She saw the city. Hmm. And I told her, oh, I've never seen the city. I've heard about it, read about it, but I've never seen it. And she explained the spires, the gold, the awesome, the light, uh, the beauty of it. But as she was walking, going over the hill into the city, uh, a light came out of the city towards her, stopped her. And the curtain, the light was a curtain, and out of the light, a brighter light stepped, and it was Jesus. And Jesus was talking to her and telling her, I need you to go back and tell them that I'm coming soon. And uh, out of his garment, he the light, he pulled another light and handed it to her. It was, a, uh, uh, it was in a crystal box. It had no energy source, but it, yet it was emitting light. And she, Jesus handed it to her and he, she took it. It's in her hand. And then she, it dawned on her, she said to Jesus, I don't have any money to pay for this. <laughs> And Jesus said, the light of the gospel is free. Take it back to the people. Uh, David, it's one thing when you pray for someone else. It's another when you pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He died, not just once, but twice. If he hadn't trained his family <laughs> on how to raise the dead, guess what? I'd be interviewing someone else right now. Be right back. <laughs> Call now and get David Hogan's Supernatural Transformation Package, which includes eight pocket-sized booklets. The anointing contained in these power-packed teachings will cause you to walk in the supernatural every day. This is the only written material available anywhere by David Hogan. Plus, you will receive his anointed DVD message, Holy Spirit and Fire. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9626. The eight anointed booklets include the supernatural keys he has gleaned from God on how to live a life of victory and power over the forces of evil and witness the supernatural kingdom of God on earth in your everyday life. The booklets include these anointed teachings, how to live a life filled with faith and power, everything you need to know about healing and demons, how to walk every day with Holy Ghost fire, David's faith-filled testimony of how I got to raise the dead, creating a demon-free zone through pulling down strongholds, the foundation for a miracle lifestyle, how to access moment by moment the glory and power of the Holy Ghost, learn how to walk in intimacy with God through his life-changing booklet, You Need Jesus. Through these power packed booklets, you will clearly understand the origin of sickness and God's provision and God's designated authority for healing your body, mind, and spirit. Receive proven keys so you can receive your healing and your miracle. And when you call, you will also receive David Hogan's powerfully anointed DVD message, Holy Spirit and Fire. David prays for you to receive your miracle, your healing, your breakthrough. 
Don't miss out on getting David Hogan's Supernatural Transformation Package, which includes eight pocket-sized booklets containing powerful keys to overcome any attack by the enemy, including sickness and disease, poverty, and more. The anointing contained in these power pack teachings will cause you to walk in the supernatural every day. This is the only written material available anywhere by David Hogan. Plus, you will receive his anointed DVD message, Holy Spirit and Fire. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9626. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9626 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. I'll tell you what. There is so much more I want to cover with David. I mean, he is literally living the, what the Bible says we all should live. Now, David, seven organs quit in one afternoon. He had died. Did you die twice at that time? I did. You died twice. If you hadn't trained your family, as I said earlier, you wouldn't be here right now. That's a true statement. What happened? Um, I was out in the village just doing my job. My job is heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, and cleanse the lepers because freely we have been given, freely we give. And I believe that. And so I'm doing my job, and my son was explaining to me uh, some of the problems we have in the work and that. And at that moment is when heaven revealed to me that my hedge of protection was lowered and that hell was coming. And my son immediately, he's a great man of God, he immediately began to tell me Bible verses, protection verses, healing verses. That's what he should do. And I just calmed him down, son, listen, I don't know why this is going to happen, but it's got to happen. In Jesus' name, we'll make it through it. Because what what you need to understand is in the morning, um, I'm healthy. In the morning, I'm going on a horse ride for 14 days, preaching three times a day. Mm, that's so, healthy. So I'm not sick. And then it hit me, and life started, life was taken from me. I uh, went blind, deaf, cardiac arrest, lungs quit, liver quit, kidneys, everything quit. And on the way home is when death came. And I saw this light, and so I was walking toward the light. I, I was leaving. And then I started hearing in my ear, like way away from me, my son-in-law speaking to me. But the deal is he was right here in my ear hollering and screaming, but it sounded like he was way off from me. And he called me back. And I turned around and went back. And I came back to life the second time. And the next thing I know, I, I, I couldn't see my, I lost my sight and my hearing, but I could, I smelled my wife and I felt her touch. And <laughs> that's important. Because <clears throat> I latched on to her. And she started praying, and she's screaming at me, and I could hear barely out of one ear. And I, I grabbed her and told her, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not going to make it this time. And I love you, and you're awesome. And I want to tell you thank you. That's when I didn't know what she was doing, but they told me later. She climbed up in my lap, grabbed my shirt, <laughs> and said, you will live and not die in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And it, it was quite a rough night. <laughs> Young man of the understatement. <laughs> <laughs> but I came to the next morning, and I was still alive. And then gradually my organs cut back on and got my sight back here, and life started coming back to me slow. And But it was hard. I couldn't work. I was weak. I couldn't pick a coffee cup up. I couldn't. There's a lot of things I could not do. And then it dawned on me that we're doing a 40-day fast. And I don't know who's going to agree or disagree. It's not relevant to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
but I told my wife, it is the will of God that I participate in this fast. She said, you can't. You're too weak. You'll die. I said, but you told me I would live. <laughs> she said, okay, but instead of you going off somewhere by yourself, can I participate with you? And I said, of course you can. She was nervous. Everybody's nervous. Because we haven't been down this trail before. This is life and death trail. This is seek God for life. So we started first day. My health didn't deteriorate anymore. I, I fasted on the seventh day. I'm asleep in my room. It's early, early in the morning. And somebody grabbed me by the head and touched me. I jump up. I reached and got a 4570 rifle. <laughs> and I, because I was from a dead sleep, right? And I grabbed this rifle and I run in my office. And all, I, I didn't see anyone, and my wife is behind me, clapping. And I turned to look at her, what's up with you? She said, look at you. I said, what is it? She said, you're holding a rifle for one. It weighs 11 pounds. Set it down. <laughs> so I did. Uh, she said, I need you to do a couple exercises for me to find the pain. Pain was gone. I was completely healed. I want you to say this prayer, and that's putting your little toes in the water. But Jesus will be inside of you rather than outside of you. And it's the start of a life of the greatest adventure a human could have. Repeat after me out loud. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, believe I believe the blood of Jesus washes away my sins. And I'm, and I'm clean. And now that I'm clean, now that I'm clean Jesus, come inside of me. Jesus, come inside of me. I, call you, I call you my Lord. Amen. Amen. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hey, I'm Stephen Bankars, and I'm a former New Age teacher who found the truth through a supernatural encounter with Jesus. The New Age movement is a deception that is invading our culture right now and even our churches. My goal is to expose this deception and all the works of the enemy and to equip you, your family, and your church for victory. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth.